Hi, this is Frank Rauscher again. Uh, I just wanted to let you know on this video, I split up the first one as part one, and then this is part two. And I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. It got kind of lengthy, so I broke it up in two parts. So I uh, hope you still enjoy it and you learn something from it. And uh, I'll see you on uh, the next video, okay? And enjoy this one and see if it's informative. If there is any questions or you're interested in any products, I do have a catalog available. I also uh, sell equipment associated with what I use, maybe not in this video, but in other ones. Uh, I have uh, sanders, I have bits, I have machinery, I have the micro grinders and a portable ones if you look for that, or the Fordhams or whatever you would need. Uh, I have environment, I have uh, the reindeer moss that I use in a lot of my segments, uh, my videos I should say, as well. So uh, if there's anything, even books, uh, like the book I was showing uh, in, in parts of this video, is uh, available as well. So if uh, the Rosalind Daisy books, I have a couple of them. Uh, one's on game birds and the other ones is uh, the songbird uh, carving too. So if you're interested, please contact me and uh, enjoy the video. See you on the next one for sure. Bye now. Okay. Here's the pattern I have for the cardinal. And I'm going to try to show you what I do as far as mapping out. We talked about in the two books that I showed you before, and I'll pull them back out again so you can see them again, is this one is the field guide uh, birds of North America and they almost all sound the same and this is uh, birds of North America oh, it's a field guide as well this is the National Ge Geographic's ones and whatever you have they're going to give you measurements and these are great references and we saw in that book that we have a measurement from the, the beak to the tail of how long that should be, that bird. And in the case of mine, if I lay down, let me get, here's a ruler here. If I lay this, from here, which is the end of the tail, to the beak. This is about, oh, almost, almost uh, seven and three quarters, okay? So what I did is I put a line down here and I put a line down here on my paper and then I try to draw the bird in profile between those two lines, starting with the beak and ending with the tail, and try to get this down. It's not an easy process if you don't have reference material in front of you. You can look at pictures, and you can also go on the internet and ask of people to do drawings or sketches of of the cardinal, and you'll see a lot of this, okay? And like I said, my experience is I've done these so many times, and I've made mistakes in the beginning, but I end up developing this to get that profile. And once I get the profile, then I project it down so that you're looking down on this bird, like this way, on this back, and that's the top view. This is the profile view. And then I also provide 
what happens under the tail, where the rump ends and the tail uh, begins on the bottom side, as well as on the top side here. I also do a profile view of the head, and uh, that that's helpful too. And, and not all my patterns are set up that way, but I try to do it. And then for the helping of people to get measurements off of this, I try to establish uh, a whole setup. And you'll see as you follow my videos, how I actually develop and get the head in place and what have you. And in the case of uh, the last bird that I just did, and that was the chickadee, and I'm gonna, I have one here. I have laid this out where the wings crisscrossed here. And if I put the center of the body, the wings crisscross over that. So some are laying underneath and, and some are laying on top. And you can make it either way. Uh, the wings on this side can be on top of this or vice versa. Uh, now the head is turned and I try to develop that. And what I do is I project everything down. This view is not, a tr it is a true view of, we'll say a bird that's like this. It's, this is dropping down. This tail is down below, as you could see here, and the top of the head is up here. So you're looking down. It's not a flat view where you can just come in. If you did, you could get away with it because uh, nobody's the wiser. But this is actually a projection down. But in, in a sense, the head is up here and the tail is sloping down. And what I do is try to project everything down. And the in developing this, sometimes I have a center line I put in there in, in this uh, top view, and then I show the angle that the head goes. Now, I have done different things uh, I think the cardinal that I did, that miniature uh, that I showed as a gift that maybe uh, you can do for Christmas, had the head turned 90 degrees. So let me show you what I've done here. I've made a template of the head as it's pointed in this direction that I have. And this is the outline of this head. Now... I would put that there. Let me get this off of my one spot. That's not the best one there. I hope we're in view here still. Yeah. And if you put point, put like a point right in here, you can pivot this head and you could have it going 90 degrees from the body or you can pick that view, or you can pick this view. And I've also done it where I had, I think it was a goldfinch I did. I had the head almost turned this much. So it, it almost looks like it's going back on itself. Okay. Now with owls, you can spin the head almost 360. Uh, owls, owls have a, a way of just turning completely. Uh, but yeah, I the most I've done it on songbirds, I think, in general, is maybe 90 degrees to somewhere in between. And, and that's what I do, is I get this, make a template, and before you really end up with your pattern, you you have to uh, find what position you would like to head and then draw it out. 
So it's in that direction rather than this direction. Now, experience-wise, the uh, Cardinal, I did a lot of line work, and, and I do some burning in that direction, and you know, I try to mark it out, and it, 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 there's different ways of approaching this. Uh, as I did with the chickadee, we did a lot of burning where I burned on the leading edge and lifted. And that gives you this look like we have in here of the cheek area where you can see we, we sort of make illusions of feathers that aren't really raised and I'm looking for a soft look, and it's the same way I do some of it in the mantle, and then maybe towards the end, I raise a couple, and that is this, like, grouping in here for this bird. Now, don't think that putting a center line down the middle is, is you know, you're trying to establish how wide the bird is, this is difficult because you don't have the views of looking down on a bird and you really have to do some study work and sketches and stuff like that. And I'm gonna be up front with you here. These patterns, a lot of it, I actually start out with the dimensions of how long and this and I take a shot like this and make sketches and then after I get into it I get a block of wood and I start going through how I want this I cut this out first and then I get the top view and I cut that one out and you'll see that on my videos how I do that but when I get done what you don't know is I go back and I, I'll i have to change things to reflect what I did on the, on the carved piece because a lot of times things started to change a little bit. So you're, you're not always fixed to everything that's here. Lengthwise and widthwise, you always wanna keep this distance from the center out on each side. That's the width of the bird as far as uh, fatness. You can even spread these uh, tail feathers out more. In the case of the chickadee, you can bring these feathers up. This cardinal, I put a drop wing. I dropped the wing down. I didn't have it coming in. But I've done that differently. Almost every time I do a, a cardinal, I try to change it a little bit. And one thing I wanted to just show you too, it's just not two directions. You're going like this on one and the head over here at another position. I'm gonna show you, I'm bringing in this chickadee and I'm gonna to try to get it so that you're looking down from the top. And this is what I did with the chickadee. The chickadee has a, a tail that goes like this so this is one line of action right up through here. Then the body is going this way. That's the middle of the body. Uh, so so I've, I've then turned it. So here's the tail this way. The body's going this way. And then the head is turned again. So there's three turns to this. It's almost like a, a swinging arc. And you can do that. If you look at this one that I did, I only did it in two directions. I have it straight up and then I have the head turned. So there's a lot of ways of positioning the bird and to making changes. And I wish I could say you could go to one source and get all this information as far as where uh, the mantle stops and starts. You you really have to do your homework and, and look at uh, different references. Uh, one of the hardest ones to get, I think, is the top view. And 
in the internet today, you can get pictures every which way to Sunday, almost, except that the top view isn't what most uh, photographers are trying to shoot on for. So you're, you're sort of winging it to what is the dimensions this way and this way. And it's, it's a, it's a point of, uh, I guess, uh, experience. And like I said, if you can get a mounted bird that you can borrow, I used to borrow from, uh, several sources and, uh, and I was able to get that. Now, if there are books out and there's patterns out already, which saves you from doing that. I'm only trying to give you the basics of how I start. But most of these dimensions that I give you is after the fact, after I carve it, I come back in and I'll just, I know what I was shooting for, but what does it really end up as if I want that look? I, I give you the true dimensions that I have. Now, like I was mentioning earlier in the video, uh, Larry Barth does it in clay. And then he he builds his, his bird out of wood after that. And uh, that is one way of doing it. But I like to just go on the wood. That's me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I guess lazy and and he's he's into perfection i'll, I'll give you that and uh, I, I'm, I don't want to go that crazy but uh, it's there's no easy way and then how to get the view of what's happening on the underneath side of the tail is another problem sometime now i'm going to put this out and if anybody can uh add to my information that I'm trying to give out here as far as reference, uh, where to go to get these references for dimensions and everything else. Uh, I would appreciate it if anybody has that sources that I could pass to my subscribers here or my viewers. I would gladly do that after I make this video, okay? And I will pass that information on. But uh the the main thing that i try to do after i develop this profile is uh, then i go and try to develop this and this is like i said it's a it's just this being dropped down looking from the top here and and i know from experience uh i've gotten some information now, I, there's also charts out there that you can get for the eye size. That's another issue. Uh, there's several areas where you could probably call up for eye sizes, uh, and uh, there's listings out there. And if somebody needs them and wants to get a hold of me on it, uh, I, I have charts that sh sh show... Uh, the size of eyes from a lot of birds, okay? So that's out there too. So I just want to try to give you some information. I don't know if I'm really clarifying this, and I don't know if I'm really giving you the basics of this is how I make the pattern. But it's it's not that easy. It's, it's, it's over the years I've learned... Uh, by trial and error. The other thing too that I've done with the Cardinal is that one I had done in a dome that was a miniature, that was something I had done in class and I actually made this body a little wider because I wanted it as a winter scene. And what I did is I'm gonna get this template I made for you here and put that here and I'm going to show you I turned the head 90 degrees so it was looking that way and I made this template that way even leaving this as is okay I mean this is the general uh, dimensions that you need to know no matter if the head's turned or not you're you're working from this center line 
and this is what you're looking at here. And you're trying to, from one side to the other, this is the dimensions you're working from, okay? And what I did is I made the body a little wider, maybe a quarter of an inch on either side, and then pulled it back in. And that was to get a winter scene. I used that bird just like I did in that dome. Uh, I, I fluffed it up and I made it fatter. Okay, so that's another way you can change things. And uh, the tail as well, these feathers can be spread out a little bit more. You can go out, you know, I, I'm not saying you're going to go fan, like a fan going out through these feathers, but you can actually make these wider. So there, there's all different positions. There's no set pattern that gives you the ultimate and and you'll see that with some birds uh where you can get patterns where they're in a, a, a sitting position standing position some of them patterns will give you the wings out so you 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 really got to go some but there are people that have made the patterns and, and and they save you a lot of time but this is how i approach making a pattern. The other thing I want to give you as a, really is very uh, basic. I go through the middle of the beak here and I call this a beak line and I go right through the beak coming back through the head. Now I try to transfer this to the other side of the head when I'm doing the bird itself no matter if it's this way or that way, there's a beak line that's going to go in in profile here. And that has to have here, here, here's one of them here. And the beak line is going right through here, right through the beak, like so. That didn't show up, did it? Let me put that down. There you go. So, that's my beak line. So everything on one side has to be the same on the other. And you need to get a 90 degree. You got the center line going through the center of the head, which is this. And then you have the beak line, which is going all the way around to the other side from one side to the other. This is imperative to have this with a 90 degree, like crosshairs right on top of each other. And then you can start building and knowing how far out the, the width of the, the cheek is, uh, where the eyes would be placed, okay? And then this next in, you know, that this head comes up into a point, not, not here, but back here. So all this pulls in, and I'm trying to reflect that in my pattern, but I, it's hard, you know, but... You do have a flat spot. See, what I'm trying to do in here is there's a flat spot, but then it rolls over down into this eye area here. So, yeah, it's it's not the easiest thing to get to doing, and uh, you can try it. It's trial and error, but you're basically starting out with this, uh, the beak to the tail. And the other thing I want to reference that I never really show on a pattern is if you took that measurement, and we'll, take, we'll just say, just for talking purposes, it's, it's eight inches. So half of that is four. So in essence, you're right at this point here, four. That's where the lake would come out from the body and then it would come down and then you have your feet down here so if you generally position from the tail to the head uh, to the beak halfway that's where the contact gets made and then your foot goes down and you can vary that a little bit depending on the position you're trying to a setup for the bird, but that's the general gist of it. So I don't know if I helped you out or I confused you. Please comment back to me if there's anybody that has more or better reference material. I will add that on another Q&A just to follow up. 
Uh, another thing I want to say on, I did a Q and A on the ceiling and uh, there is others, other uh, sealers out there that I'll talk. I actually was very surprised. Larry Barth uh, was stating that he uses uh, gesso uh, and it was Liquitex. He really uh, liked a lot and how he works it and, and stuff like that. I, I shy away from it and use the Krylon spray and he, and I use, uh, not, he uses gesso to get it white and as a sealer at the same time. Uh, I use the Krylon spray as the sealer and then I paint mine with titanium white. So it's, it, everybody has a different method, but he swore by the, the, the gesso and, uh, and, and you got to watch with gesso. You got to water it down and you got to build it up slowly and, and you don't want to lose your detail. So, uh, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give me a thumb up. And if you could subscribe to my channel, I'd appreciate that greatly. And if you uh, have any friends uh, that are into birds or even animals too, I'll be doing them too. Uh, please uh, reference my, uh, my website, or not my website, my uh, YouTube channel. And I'd appreciate that very much and hope to see you on the next one. I'll be, I will be starting a new bird. So bear with me and I'll see you on the next video.